good morning guys today's Wednesday I'm heading to the shop uh, oh, good to know traffic's light this morning I could probably shut that notification off because you know it is Nebraska but um, nope uh, I filmed a few things yesterday so I'm gonna try to make sense of them sometimes when I'm doing these films I uh, kind of mix and match and uh, hopefully I, the end product is something that um, is an actual coherent thought, maybe, but, um, and actually worthwhile to you, but nope, heading to the shop today, so let's roll. I'll try to get this motor, so before we switch the beam, all these, I'll probably have some to spray out anyway. Well, I'll go top off the water and get that way. spray out so what I'm doing now is I'm going to try to upload a few field files um, for some seed guys up to climate field view. And I'm thinking I should be able to do that right off the, um, the monitors here in the tractor. Just pull the data off that and then upload it directly to climate, um, climate.com. And so what they can do is what they use is they use the climate um, field view app then they should be able to look at where their seeds planted um, so they don't have to go through and look for papers and stuff um, I'm just kind of experimenting I could just print, up, print them off a PDF but sometimes the uh, curiosity gets the better means so I like to try to do it and see if I can do it better that way they have the data always and uh, go from there so um, if I flip this around here I gotta put the USB stick over here on these export data and so I'll just want a, a few, a couple fields anyway. Do it. Instead of doing them all, I'm gonna come in here to custom export next. See, I want that. There is any work data. I might need to go back here. For some reason we have one of these that's named different. So at some point somebody must have made a duplicate yeah, see there how it works. And that causes trouble because then it makes us confused. So that's going to export the work data on that field. And so um, what I'll do after this is I'll take it back into the office, which is right over there, and uh, see if I can't zip the file and upload it to the Climate Field View app. So I've came into the shop or the office here and um, basically what I did is I came down here, let's see what I did, and I zipped the data that I brought in. And I'm hoping this works because I'm doing this kind of as I go. And so if it doesn't work, you'll be the first to know. Basically what I gotta come and do here is what I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to upload this file, is what I'm doing now. I come in, find my zip data file. Now it's gonna upload it. And it's probably gonna take a little bit of time here. Nope. I'll get you back when it gets finished loading and see if it actually processes any files and then we'll go from there. So yesterday was slightly successful getting those, uh, at least most of those files moved from the John Deere screens uploaded to the climate field view on the website just so um, those seed guys could um, basically see where we planted their um, seed at and stuff and so um, I'll kind of show you guys what it looks like on the climate field view website anyway and you can also look at these on the iPad here and I might load that here after a second what it does they can come along here basically just see what varieties they planted um, I think they can also just kind of take a look at what you planted the rate you planted it at and uh, not sure why that's a little bit well I guess that if we were to edit this we planted it right at 160, so it might have dropped just a hair heavier, so let's go 150. See that? Obviously that seed might have dropped a little heavier than 
than the other varieties did. Um, other things, it, it just kind of gives you basic information. Uh, it won't bring all your singulation and stuff over. But this is basically the most pertinent information is population planning date. Um, you can even see how fast you're going while you're doing it. So yeah, that's basically need to know information. So we're gonna come in here, open our field view app. Here's kind of our main screen. It gives us um, some uh, basic overview stuff here. We can come down here to fields and we can actually see the fields that we've loaded. This is one of them. And so uh, this is basically a, just another way of people looking at data and you can see the different varieties, obviously the different colors, I mean different varieties. We can kind of do the same thing, come down here to hybrids um, and basically see um, different things about how we did it. Um, population, you can obviously see your planning date, which is kind of nice because sometimes you can, say you get rained out and halfway through the field, you got three or four days later or in this, in case of this year, it could be three or four weeks later, but um, you could also just look analyze your yield based off planting dates and stuff like that. So, so this is something Dad would talk me into. Oh, I got three quarters of the way up, but I just got too scared. Gotta change a light bulb. This better be guaranteed for like ever. up today what we're getting ready to spray now is our soybeans for the first well actually it'll be the second spraying we already put our pre-emerges out before we plant but this is what we're spraying we planted all extend beans so we have to use this form of dicamba it's a less volatile form of dicamba it's ingenia and then you have to use special not special roundup but you have to use the labeled roundup for the given uh, form of dicamba this is also your well basically your additive to help prevent more drift and those up there zidua sc and the outlook are extra residuals that we're using to go along with that um, my brother got done spraying all of our corn for the second time and on that we sprayed basically another form of dicamba which is a safened form of it it's called Diflex Duo and with that Duo it also has a residual chemical with that as well I think it's Lotus is kind of the the name brand term for it but yeah here this is what this is what we we're spraying on that and also we're this is another glyphosate Durango we can't use that form with that in Ingenia it's just not labeled for it and we try to best to follow the labels as best as we possibly can. So yeah, what does that mean? We do use chemicals and GMOs on our farm, um, which brings us to our next point, but let's head out to the field and uh, I'll talk about it more. brought you out here to continue the story on GMOs. This corn is a genetically modified corn. We plant 100% GMOs, both corn and soybeans. Um, it's been a while uh, since we've actually planted non-GMOs. We actually did try some organic here maybe a little probably roughly 10 years ago. Um, that just didn't work out. The problem is it was a fresh pasture that we tore up to put in under irrigation um, we thought we'd be fine uh, we shouldn't have much weed pressure but the weeds came heavy and um, the yields were really low we actually even had to hire a crew to come in and cut out a lot of the weeds um, so it just wasn't 
practical back then. I'm not saying we would never try it again. I'm just saying, um, you know, it's a lot of shift in management to try to chase, uh, change an operation or to even just do a few fields to organic. Um, it takes more manpower. It takes more tractor time because you're doing more tillage in an organic situation. Um, and so that's why we've kind of haven't gone back to it yet. It, it just hasn't been practical enough yet for us to look at it. Um, but yeah, like I said, we're not ever going to count it out. The reason why it's hard for us to go back to a non-GMO is basically um, we are in a reduced tillage situation. What we do, we've tried no tilling and we've actually kind of uh, gone back to a little tillage. We call it strip till. And what that is, is we till this zone from, from here to here and we put our nutrients all, well not all of it, but most of them right in here. Like, especially the ones that don't move through the ground as much like your phosphorus and uh, other ones like that. We also put our nitrogen right there. So we don't put it super deep because as those roots go down, um, nitrogen will tend to, to go through your soil quicker. And so we don't put it super deep because usually you get enough rains in the springtime that's going to start pushing that nitrogen down and our roots tend to chase it down and, and we've really got pretty decent cutter, color considering uh, what we've had for this spring. And so uh, even on these hills, I know they don't look like hills much on, on camera, but it's a decent hill that goes through there and it, they are a little bit yellower in spots. Um, it's just, it's still got pretty decent color. Once those really find the nitrogen, they'll take off a little bit quicker. Um, our lighter soils tend to leach a little quicker and they just don't hold it as well, but um, it, they still produce fairly well. But getting back to um, GMOs, the reason why we do that is weed control in low tillage situations. It's, it's a lot harder to do in a non-GMO situation. You're, you're reduced in the number of chemicals you can use. You, it takes away your glyphosates and, and some others maybe too, but um, also you usually have to increase your insecticide use when you go to a non-GMO. What GMOs do is help that plant protect itself better from the elements. So if you were to come out here, you, you wouldn't be able to physically tell usually the difference between non-GMO and GMO plants. So GMOs are able to defend themselves from insects better. They're also um, able to withstand different chemicals a lot better and be actually resistant to them. Like this is a Roundup Ready gene. So we can come out here and spray glyphosate and not kill it. A non-GMO would just kill it dead in a doorknob. And also the problem we're having now in our soybeans is actually the soybeans are becoming resistant to the Roundup. Um, and that was on the farmer's back. That was kind of a management issue that we've kind of learned from is, is Roundup. We used overused Roundup. And so uh, now we're having to come in with what that was called Ingenia. And that's a, a form of dicamba. It's the latest version of dicamba. And so we use that on our soybeans now because that helps us kill water hemp in our area. Water hemp, uh, kochia and palmer are our biggest enemies and water hemp and palmer are really rapid growing weeds and last year we tried going half and half extend and roundup ready soybeans it's just our roundup ready soybeans we we've tried as many residuals as we could we just cannot keep ahead of the water hemp and so basically the extend beans are our last ditch effort until something else kind of comes around or until we get something more under control with our weeds and so that's why we're, we're we are 100 percent extend soybeans year Ex extend soybeans this year so i guess what i'm trying to say is gmos have helped us to become more sustainable farmers in our area i also want to emphasize i'm not against non-gmo i'm not against organic farming i think if you whatever you put into your body whatever you feel safe putting into your body for me it doesn't bother me to ever put a genetically modified or or derived from genetically modified crops into my body. Um, I'm more scared of probably other things, but that could be a whole different story and you don't want to know my fears. But. So that's my take on GMOs. Um, whether you like it or not, leave a comment below. But um, yeah, corn's looking fairly good. Um, I don't think we're gonna have to break our shins 
this year to make it knee high by the 4th of July. I don't know how tall it'd be. Usually it's usually about waist high or chest high. Sometimes I've seen it pollinate even a week after the 4th of July. But nope, today's the 13th of June. And so yeah, this guy's about yay tall right now. It looks good. And that's kind of why we, I don't know, we still hate to deviate too much from the strip till it's, it's finding that nutrients quicker. Also while kind of maintaining soil on our hills better, if you could see we leave the corn stalks because we want this ground to last a long time as it has already. But we also want to make sure we save as much topsoil because we're limited on topsoil in our area, especially as you get on those hills over there. We just don't have a lot of topsoil to hold on to, so we've gone away from disking and uh, field cultivating is kind of the, how we used to do it years ago, and then we switched to no-till. The problem with no-till in our area, area to us is it's just those coolness, to cool starts, and um, if you strip till that, that root zone, it just gets that plant going a little bit faster, and so that's kind of why we've still been doing that guys thanks for uh, uh, watching like subscribe and uh, we'll catch you next time